It's the grandson of Right Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light. It's only hard to do the things that Yahushua requires of us when we don't believe him. That's the only time it gets hard. When you read his word and he tells you a solution to a problem, the only time it's difficult to do that is when you doubt that that solution will actually work. If you knew that the solution would work, then it wouldn't it wouldn't cause you to fight against it or kick against the pricks, as we say. You wouldn't kick against the pricks. You only kick against the pricks because you doubt. Now, when you read Yahushua talking about people in the scriptures, what often was his gripe with them? Their unbelief, right? Their faithlessness. So then as you as elect, knowing that Yahushua, your master, who elected you, Yahushua elected you, if you're elected indeed. So you saying you're elect, then you must know that it's going to require you to have great faith. Now faith is the ability to believe the thing that you can't see. You all understand that? So when he tells you to do something in a circumstance, you can't see the results. And that's why you doubt it. Y'all understand me. Another thing that hinders our faith is impatience. And impatience comes from doubt. Do y'all understand that? When you dissect your impatience about something, it's due to Doubt that you're actually going to have the thing. Fear has crept in, which is causing these things like impatience, you see? Follow what I'm saying. If you're in a relationship and you and your partner have ought with each other, y'all have some type of disagreement, right? And then one of, one of you guys says, okay, well, let me just have a minute to clear my head. I'm out of here. And they get up to go and leave. Now in the midst of them being gone, you start calling and texting them. They don't answer, they don't respond, but you start calling and texting. Then you start frantically calling and texting because they're not answering. Then you start leaving messages and shit talking about, why you don't answer your phone? You need to call me and I'm worried about you and stop playing these games. Stop playing with my heart. and That's called impatience. Well, that's only because you doubt that they'll come back. Y'all hear me? You have fear that they're going to come back. As we say in science here in this world, you have abandonment issues. That's called a fear, a fear of being abandoned. See, it causes you to be impatient when people leave you. So like I said, it all comes from fear and doubt. Which is the thing that Christ was talking about. Look at Peter. When Peter was walking on the water and he saw the wind and the waves. And he started to doubt and have fear. And he started to sink. And remember what your master said to Peter. When he grabbed his hand, he lifted him back up. He said, why didst thou doubt? Now the obvious answer is what? He doubted because he saw the storm. So then, in your life, why did you doubt? Because you saw the storm. You didn't keep your eye on Yahusha's words. Did Peter keep his eye on Yahusha? Well, if he did, would he have sank? No, but he took his eyes off Yahusha and he was looking at the storm. Well, that's what you're doing in your life, elect, when you find yourself starting to become down, fearful, doubtful. And recognize those things when they come into your life so they don't fester and grow. You can root them out as soon as you see the signs of them. So I, I'm, I'm aiming for something in my life, some goal. And along that path, something comes in and it seems as if it's an obstacle. Well, what does the hurdler do when they're running track? They jump over the hurdle and they keep running. They don't slow down. But what do you do? We start to doubt whether you can make it over the hurdle. You start to doubt whether you're fast enough. You start to doubt whether you can jump high enough. 
to make it over the hurdle. And then you run into the hurdle and crash into it. Then you lay down there on the ground and you cry and you blame God for, for the hurdle being there. When in all actuality, there is no hurdle there. Understand what I'm telling you. A hurdler. Take right now. YouTube. Toby Amusan. T-O-B-I. Last name A-M-U-S-A-N. Nigerian. World record holder. In the 100 meter hurdles. Women's 100 meter hurdles. She holds the world record. There aren't actually hurdles when she's running. If y'all understand what I'm telling you. It's just her body out there moving. She's running in a technique is all it is. She's not looking at the hurdles or thinking of them. She's only thinking of the steps and the technique. Her stride. The cadence of the movements. You see? And at the end of the race, she hasn't touched any hurdles, so therefore there weren't any. Do y'all understand what I'm telling you? Same thing goes for you in your life. While you're running on the track, hurdles are there, and if you're leaping over them, then you're not touching them, therefore they don't exist. So there's no need to have jumped over it and then be thinking in your mind, wow, I made it over that hurdle. I hope I make it over the next one. Well, if you made it over that one, then you shall indeed make it over the next one. If you maintain your technique, like Toby Amazon, great technique, like Sidney McLaughlin, another world record holder. Hurdler. 400 meter hurdles. Just, re just YouTube it and watch what she's doing. A technique, a strategy, so that I can run as though there aren't any hurdles there at all. I'm not thinking of the hurdles. So the same thing is what Peter should have done. Not thought about the hurdle, but he saw the hurdle and then he tripped over it trying to do it on his own power, to jump over it on his own power. No, 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 Keep your eyes on the technique, the truth. There's a technique to walking on the water. And it's keeping your eyes founded on the truth. And as long as you keep your eyes founded on the truth, then your technique won't shift or waver. And you won't strike a hurdle trying to leap over it on your own power or on your own technique. Just stick to the true technique. So yeah, Abiyah wants us all to be in our nature. Right now I'm watching a cat. There are birds down here in a puddle. It rained earlier and they're all in the puddle. And I'm watching a cat in the grass stalking right now. I'm watching it. And I'm watching the, him chase a couple birds that just flew off. And he didn't get nothing yet. But you see he's just doing what a cat does. And these birds are just doing what birds do. So are you doing what you're supposed to do is the question. That cat, there's a technique to a successful hunt. Now, he, his first attempt, he failed. The bird saw him. Why? Because he didn't do the technique true. He didn't stalk. He, was a, he wasn't patient enough. I watched him. I just watched him do it, so I know he wasn't patient enough. He came out too early and exposed himself. He should have stayed in the grass a little longer and waited. But he tried to run out there and they saw him running. And they all took flight. So had he just stalked a little slower, they wouldn't have seen him and he would have been to creep closer and then started running and he might have caught something. You see? So what's the technique that the cat using here? He's gonna stalk, not be seen, creep slowly, and he has to be patient, quiet, Sure-footed, same thing you have to be. Patient, sure-footed to walk on the water, correct? 
You see, and when you realize these things just come from doubts of what Yahusha has taught you, then all you have to do is say, okay, let me make a decision today. Let me apply what he told me to do in this circumstance. And see, that shit be hard sometimes because your ego, y'all, that's it. Your own personal ego won't vindication right now. <laughs> you feel me? But what does Yahusha say? This is the patience and the faith of the saints. What is that we would get repaid for all the tur turning the cheek that we've done? For taking the suffering on and instead of letting the, the, the evil one, we let him slide and we took it and said, okay, whatever. If that's what you guys want to believe, then fine. I won't fight. If somebody slandered you. All right. That's what you want to say about me? Fine. That's what you did. That's turning the other cheek. It's not about a physical fight. We are spiritual beings. It's about when someone wrongs you spiritually, you turn the other cheek. So what is spiritually wronging someone? Lying to them. Can you see a lie? No. But can you discern a lie? Yes. So I, eyes seeing, isn't that physical? Yes. Your spirit in discerning, is that spiritual? Yes. So then you see, you're turning the other cheek spiritually. When they, when they smear campaigned you, when they just lie, 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 lie. And they go to their other little flying monkeys and they smear campaign and tell stories about you. And then their flying monkeys come around and then they, they, guess what I heard. And they share, share the shit and the little gossipers get wind of it and they fly around, taking it around from flower to flower, spreading these little rumors and you don't even know. And when you show up, people are looking at you sideways and you don't know why. You don't know you've been smeared at work already. You don't know you've been smeared at church already. You don't know you've been smeared by your coworkers, your friends, your peers. You don't know you've already been smeared at school. <laughs> You don't know you've already been smeared at practice. You've already been smeared in the locker room. You see that? So when you show up, you don't even know these things have been murmured about you. So then what do you do? You look at Yahusha. Let's see what, what's going on with Yahusha. Did people murmur about him? <laughs> Did they rumor about him did they smear campaign and bear false witness on yahusha come on let's praise our master today did they sell him out did they betray him did they deny him his so-called friends Betray, deny his own. And you're mad? Tell me right now today, any of you elect that are angry and bitter today about anything that was done to you, you tell me today, when has one of your friends betrayed you to death? You tell me. Because your master was betrayed to death by his so-called friend who ate at his table. Yahusha washed that man's feet and he still betrayed him. He put his hand in the sop with him and he still betrayed him. Yahusha said, you're going to betray me, Judas. And Judas still betrayed him. And you're talking about what didn't happen to you? Which one of you elect, which one of you elect were spat upon and scourged 40 lashes for nothing? Which one of you? Which one of you elect? Show me your scars then. Which one of you elect? 
have been hung upon a cross and crucified publicly, naked in humiliation. Which one of you elect? Which one of you elect was blindfolded and punched in the face and beaten and smacked and mocked and said, prophesy unto us who struck you, if you can do so. Prophesy unto us who hit you. Which one of y'all that was done to? Just one of those things I mentioned is horrible and deplorable behavior to have to suffer, especially wrongfully, but to suffer all of them in one and many more things as well. All praises to the king. All praises to my master, Yahusha. The king who saved me, Isaiah, who delivered me, Isaiah. The lamb, precious and spotless and blameless and guiltless. So yes, you elect, you follow suit like your master. And you suffer as your master suffered. So think it not strange, little ones. You baby Christ, think it not strange that you suffer these humiliations at times. For you have not struggled with sin unto death or you wouldn't be hearing my voice right now. You have been given grace. And now you tell me, who was the one that came to this earth full of truth and grace? What was his name? And then what is his name? Oh yeah, my master lives. And so through him I live. And in him I have my being. And in him I have my words. And in him I have my heart. And in him I have my breath. And in him I have my everything. So there's no need for me to doubt. There's no need for me to think of myself as separate. I am. I am standing on the water. Not I will be standing on the water. Not I want to stand on the water. Not I wish I could stand on that water like him. I am standing on the water with him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba Yah. We say hallelujah in the highest. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah, brakata. Hallelujah, brakata. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Yahuwah. The highest. All praises to you, Father. Thank you for your breath. Thank you, Father. So we just remember your words. We stick to them. We don't run. Hey, how you doing? We don't run. We don't hide. We don't cower in fear or doubt. For if there's anything that disappoints our master, then what is it? This question I'm asking right now, for those who have listened to this message up to this point, the thing that disappoints our master the most, what is it? Put it in the comment section and timestamp. Put it on in there. Now, the reason why I asked you to timestamp it is so that when I tell you the answer, you can see if your answer was the same answer I gave. It's faithlessness. If there's anything that disappoints Yahusha, if there's anything that causes him to marvel, it is unbelief. So then it is obvious then, isn't it, y'all? 
my true kin, my true brothers and sisters, we were scattered. I miss y'all more than you can even imagine. The assembly where we all stood together and praised our father together hand in hand. Holding each other and crying on each other and healing each other with our love and our truth and our feelings for one another in harmony. And we've been scattered by our enemies to the four corners of the earth. And I reach and I extend my hands to you in the spirit. And I say, take my hands and rise up with me in truth. And don't doubt today anymore, brother or sister. Don't doubt your master anymore. Don't believe the lies that they've taught you of your master either. Worshipping an idol of wood and stone and some thing they made up and formed with their own hands. And put up there on the cross and said, this is him. But my master lives within me and he lives within you too, my brother and my sister. So then if he lives in you, then that means that you must be in harmony with him. Not kicking against the pricks of what he told you. Turn the other cheek. If you don't turn it, then you're not in harmony with him. And that's the end of the story. That's the end of the story. It's no need in debating and to try to work your feelings around what he said. Turn the other cheek and keep it moving. Don't harbor any bitterness anymore today over anything that happened to you. For he suffered for all of us. Is it not written? So heap those things into his hands. He says, come unto me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden. Come unto me and I will give you rest for your souls. Do you hear that? Promise. Do you hear it when you've been heavy laden and you've been worn down with the vicissitudes of this life that destroy a man and destroy a woman and take their children from them and they can't see them and they have no joy because all they have is work and labor and they're heavy laden with bills and stress and pain and agony and you say come unto you. And when we come, you take those things off of us and you liberate us and you give us feet like hinds feet and allow us to walk in high places with great speed. You are amazing, Father. You are awesome and you are amazing to behold. And I love to be in your presence and I never want to be anywhere ever again. Never want to be away from you. And I pray for the elect, I will strengthen them. I say this not in boasting, Father, for you have given me the gift. And I pray that the faith that you have been given unto me, that you bless the elect to have the same matter of faith and give them double, Abba Yah. Matter of fact, pour unto the elect more than what you have given me, Abba Yah. What you have given me is enough. So I know that if you give them double, if you bless the elect with double, then they shall have it. And they shall triumph over their enemies, for I have with half of what they have been given. I thank you, Abba Yah. Be with these, your children. Show them your ways and your truth. Open their eyes to your beauty that you have shown me. You've shown the grandson sitting on your lap. Thank you, Father, for showing me that so that I can share this goodness with my brothers and my sisters and tell them you don't have to fear. You don't have to be afraid, brother. You don't have to be afraid, my sister. You don't. You don't. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go and believe that you are better than these birds and that Abba Yahi providing for them today, then trust him to provide from you, knowing that you're better than a sparrow. You're better than a whole flock. And if he takes care of one sparrow and not one of them falls out of the air without his notice, then he damn sure love you and he knows every single hair of your head. You love your child and yet you know not the amount of hairs they have on their head. Yet your father love you more than you can love your own child. So imagine that if you can. Imagine it if you can. And rest in it if you may. If you will allow yourself to rest in the bosom of Yahusha, the only place there is to be, if you ask me. For I am the branch planted into the true vine, and from him I get my nourishment and my strength and my vigor and my power and my might and my strength and my beauty and my wisdom.
and my knowledge and my foresight and my foreknowledge. I thank you, Abba Yah, for all of your gifts that you have bestowed upon the elect, for you are gracious and you are full of mercy and you are wonder to be looked at, Abba Yah. To be known is above all riches. For us to know you, Abba Yah, is above all gold, even the gold of Ophir, Abba Yah. We thank you. So fear not today, children. His commandments. His commandments are not grievous, and nor are they hard. Love your neighbor. Those that persecute you, those that hate you, harbor not bitterness in your heart toward them. But be like your master in everything and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And if they do know it, then woe unto them. For your master said the same thing. Woe unto you, you hypocrites, for you know what you do and you hide it. So you be just like your master today, being balanced, for that is key. For you to know that today, not to judge yourself harshly. For what measure you meet, it will be measured unto you again. So if you judge yourself harshly, you'll judge others harshly. But give yourself grace as you have been given grace by your master. Give others grace in your life. And give yourself grace in the things that you do. You don't always have to eat a salad. You can eat a cheeseburger every now and again. You don't always have to be celibate. You can have sex every now and again, righteously. Isn't that what the scriptures teach us to do? Do everything righteously. Do all that you do righteously. You don't have to drink wine every day. You can drink wine one day a week. You can eat the cheeseburger one day a week and you can labor the six days in the righteous thing to do for that is a righteous life so moderate yourselves and be balanced out here today wearing your crown with your head up high not having shame or confounded for it is written Silaram Israel